Welcome to another deep dive. Our listener wrote in this time with a really interesting one. Yeah. A story by Anton Chekhov. Oh, Chekhov. Called The Safety Match. Excellent. Have you read this one? I have. Yeah, it's a good one. It's um, I was really, classic. I was so hooked right from the first couple of lines. Yeah. Um, so I think to set the stage for our listener, The Safety Match... It's a short story, and it kind of has all the trappings yeah. of like a classic who do it. Right? Absolutely, yeah. Oh, so a little mystery. We're in uh, we're in 1885. Okay. In rural Russia, mm-hmm. and we've got this retired military man, right, Marcus Klausov, mm-hmm. and he's found dead in his country estate. Yes. And it's like right away, I'm 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 hooked. Yeah. Right, because it's like, okay, is this a locked room mystery? Yeah. How did this happen? Yeah, and Chekhov does such a wonderful job. Uh, I think right from the beginning, kind of setting this tone. Yes. That's going to be present throughout the whole story. It starts with this: um, the discovery of the body is very strange. Yes. You know, it's not like somebody finds him right away. He kind of disappears for a little while, and then, and then eventually, they realize, okay, something's happened here. And then you've got like the doors locked from the inside. But it seems like there's no other way in or out. Yeah, right. And uh, all his valuables are there, so it doesn't seem like a robbery. Right. Yeah. So it's, how did this happen? Right from the beginning, Chekhov is just dropping all of these details yes. that are really intriguing. Yeah. And one of those is the safety match. Yes, absolutely. Which, you know, now we just think, oh, safety match. But you sent us this. Um, I did, yeah. And so you made a note here. You know, this is 1885, right? Right, and this is rural Russia. Rural Russia, so. So the safety match is a relatively new invention. Yes. Um, And not only that, it would have been something that would have been primarily used by uh, the upper classes. Oh, interesting. So right away, by introducing this detail of the safety match, he's kind of narrowing down, you know, who our potential suspects could be. Ooh, that's fascinating. Because it's it's not something that everybody would have had in their pocket at the time. Oh, I love it already. Yeah. Like, and that's uh, that's part of what I love about Chekhov, too, is that these little details, they're not just there for, you know, they're not just to move the plot along. Yes. They're, they're their own little commentaries you know on on the social structure at the time and you know who these people are yeah yeah it's like it's a tiny little detail that opens up like a whole world absolutely of of understanding this time and place yeah and it makes you think too right it's like even in our own lives how many little details are there that we just kind of gloss over right that that might tell a bigger story that's such a good point yeah okay so we've got this Locked room, seemingly impossible crime. We've got this safety match. Right. What other breadcrumbs does Chekhov give us? Well, there's a missing boot. Okay. There are signs of a struggle on the bed. Okay. There's a blood stain under the window. But perhaps even more intriguing than those physical clues are the characters themselves. Ah, uh, yes, because this wouldn't be a very interesting who doing it. Right. If we didn't have some suspects. Exactly. Exactly. So tell us, who are the usual suspects in in Chekhov's world here? Well, we've got Nicholas, the disgruntled valet. Okay. He's got a bit of a grudge against Klosov. Okay. Um, we've got Sykov. He's the estate agent. Uh-huh. He acts very suspiciously after the murder. Okay. And then there's Aquilina. Okay. She's the object of both of their affections, so mm. we've got a little love triangle going on. Oh, how very Chekhovian, right? Exactly right. It wouldn't be a Chekhov story without a little bit of... Um, intrigue. Intrigue, exactly. So at this point, did you have a suspect in mind like when you were first reading it? You know, what's what's really fascinating um, is that Chekhov is so good at using our own instincts against us, right? So yeah. he knows that we're going to come to the story with our own prejudices with our own assumptions Mm -hmm. and he plays on those um so that you know you might immediately look at one of these characters and think oh well they're guilty you know based on 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 how they're presented or or maybe their social standing or something like that oh interesting um and so he's really holding up a mirror yeah not only to these characters but also to the reader i think and challenging us to kind of examine our own biases as we try to solve this case along Never. with Never. with these characters. I love it. So we've got these characters and and like you said, it's almost like because Chekhov is so good at this, I'm already suspicious because he's leading us down this road and it's it seems almost too perfect. Yeah. And this is where Chekhov, the master of kind of psychological realism, mm-hmm. I think really 
uh, starts to play with our expectations a little bit. Yes. Right? Because he understands that, you know, human beings, we're often our own worst enemy. Right. You know, it, we we are prone to self-deception. We're blinded by our own biases. And um, I think, you know, to embody that maybe more than any other character in the story is uh, is our dear Dukovsky. Dukovsky. Okay, yes, because we left off last time, you know, he was really focused on that safety match. Yes. Yeah. That was his thing. That was gonna. That was gonna break the case wide open. It's like he he latched onto that safety match like it was the um. What's that? The Rosetta Stone. Yes, exactly. He was like, "This is it. This is the key. If I can just figure out where this came from, yes. we've solved this whole thing." He was like, "Elementary, my oh. dear Watson." <laughs> like he was ready to go. Exactly. Exactly. But in the process, I feel like. Did he miss some things? Like, because he was so focused on the safety match? Well, he seems to, right. Because, I mean, remember, um, you know, Nicholas, when when asked about the the blood under the window, yeah. what's his explanation for that? He had killed a chicken. He had slaughtered a chicken, yeah. Which even, you know, if you'd had a few vodkas, which he claims to have done. Right, right. That still seems a little far-fetched, maybe. Yeah, it's it's not the most believable uh alibi right but but dukovsky because he has this idea in his mind it's got to be the safety match it's got to be the safety match right he seizes upon that as confirmation right yeah. he's like see this all makes sense now this all fits with my theory and he completely ignores any evidence to the contrary it's like tunnel vision right yes he's he's just so sure he's so focused on this one thing yeah that that he misses you know and and again i think this is Chekhov doing what he does so brilliantly is he's he's highlighting something that's not just a personality quirk of Dukovsky, but I think it's something that we all do, right? Yeah. We we have a tendency to look for evidence that confirms what we already believe, even if that belief is, you know, maybe based on not a whole lot to begin with. Right, right. Confirmation bias. Confirmation bias, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So Dukovsky is convinced he's got his man. Okay. Even though, even though the evidence is, you know, kind of flimsy at best okay but the safety match is still out there so he goes on this this quest to figure out where the safety match came from okay and and eventually through some uh you know asking around and whatnot he manages to track down a box of safety matches that was sold nearby okay and he's like this is it this is it this is the final piece of the puzzle okay so who bought the safety matches it's got to be one of our suspects right well this is check off right right so it's not going to be that easy yeah but he does he does manage to find out who got these safety matches okay who was it it was olga petrovna olga petrovna yes wait remind me who that is again it's like late at night i can't remember only klausos estranged wife his wife. Yes. I thought they hated each other. I thought she like they were separated. They were like they were indeed. But that's what makes it so compelling to Dukovsky, right? Okay. Is like uh huh, a crime of passion. No. Oh. It all makes sense now. She was in a jealous rage. Well. Um, you know, so he's found the murder weapon, or at least you know where the murder weapon came from. He thinks. Right. He's got a motive. Okay. He's convinced that he has solved the case. Okay. Does he go to confront her? Oh, he does. Yeah. Much to the uh, chagrin of Chubikov, who Oh, poor Chubikov. He's like, oh, this guy. Right. Drags him, you know, middle of the night. Yeah. We're going over to Olga Petrovna's house. I've, I've got this all figured out. I love it. Um, And uh, they confront her. Okay. And this is where Chekhov's was a curveball. Right Take now. time. Yeah. Yes. Okay. All right. So we're like right at the climax, right? We are. They're going to confront her. They've got the safety matches. This is it. This is the moment of truth. Dukovsky is is certain this is it. He's ready for his Matlock moment. Exactly right. Yep. He's He's got his case all laid out. Yes. And she's going to break down any second. Okay. So they confront her, and, and instead of denying it, instead of getting hysterical, she remains remarkably calm. Ooh, okay. And she's like, oh, yeah, come with me. She takes them to the bathhouse. The bathhouse? Okay, why the bathhouse? And there... My friend? Don't leave me hanging. What's in the bathhouse? They find Marcus Klasov. No. Alive and well. He's alive. I thought we were investigating a murder. And that's Chekhov for you, right? Oh, my God. Takes this this seemingly straightforward, you know, yeah, you... murder mystery and, and turns it into uh, this commentary on on perception, on bias, on, on the absurdity almost of our own yeah. assumptions about the world. He totally played us. He totally played us, and he played Dukovsky. Um, okay. But how so? So Klausov is not dead. He's just indisposed. Indisposed. That's one word for it. what's the what's the explanation here? So, as he tells it, he he had a little bit of a um, 
a disagreement with his estranged wife involving a thrown boot. Okay, that explains the missing boot. Maybe the blood stain. Uh, nah. Olga, thinking that maybe he's dead, panics, drags him to the bathhouse. Okay. And there he is, enjoying, you know, a private little feast of uh, vodka and ham, as one does. As one does, so the safety matches. Red herring. So all this time. The locked room. More or less accidental. The safety match is just there to throw us all off the scent. Oh my gosh. So he wanted... He wanted us to think it was something more than it was. Oh, check off. And it's brilliant, right? Because it works on so many levels. And again, I think it speaks to this human desire... Yes. ...to see what we want to see, even if it means kind of, you know, ignoring the truth that's maybe right in front of us. So what you're saying is, I should go check my bathhouse. You might find something interesting in there. Who knows? Oh, my gosh. This has been quite the deep dive. It has been a journey, yeah. We started with this locked room mystery, the suspicious death. Right. And we were led down this path of intrigue and, and red herrings. Yes. And in the end, it wasn't this big, you know, master criminal. Right. It was just, you know, human. Some women error, human folly. Yes. Misunderstanding, a little bit of vodka. Exactly. Maybe some ham, and there you have it. The perfect Chekhovian recipe. Oh, this was fantastic. So as uh, our listener goes off into their week, maybe checks their bathhouse, what's something that they can that they can kind of think about based on on Chekhov's brilliance here? I think the big takeaway here is is something we've we've kind of touched on, which is, you know, how often do we overcomplicate things? How often do we look for the most sensational explanation when the truth is often far more mundane? Yes. So, yeah, keep your eyes open for those uh, for those everyday mysteries because you never know where they might lead you. I love that. And what those seemingly insignificant details might be telling you about about your own life. Such a good point. This was amazing. Thank you so much for taking a deep dive with me. Always a pleasure. Thanks for having me.